Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Diocles, General Manager of RACO Rents. I'd like to welcome everyone attending our webinar today on TSI Port Account Respirator Fit Testing, What You Need to Know. Our presenters today are Marty Brands with TSI and Jordan Michael with RACO Rents. In this 45-minute webinar, they will cover the following, setting up and running a fit test, and then Jordan will cover troubleshooting and problems, uh, and what you need to know when you rent a port account from RACO Rents. Uh, today is our first for our webinars. We're not going to have any slide presentation. We're going to be doing demos uh, with a webcam. So please bear with us if we run into any issues. We'll be recording the presentation today and have it posted in a couple days on our website. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we'll cover them at the end of the presentation as time allows. Welcome. Uh, here you go, Marty, and we'll get our webcam going. So good afternoon. Um, thanks for, for attending this. Uh, what I'm gonna initially do, uh, first of all, my name is Marty Brands. I am with TSI. Uh, we manufacture the port account. What I first wanna do is just go over the, the setup of the unit when, um, when you get it from Rayco Rents. So you have a better idea of how to go about it. First and foremost, obviously we're gonna plug in and hopefully everybody can see this. There is the cord right here, um, plugs into the AC-DC uh, port. The key to this too now is there's two connection points that you can use. There is a Wi-Fi dongle on the back that will also be supplied when you get it from Rayco Rents. And that sends a Wi-Fi signal from the machine to either the tablet that you'll receive with the machine or your own computer. That is one of the ways you can do it. It's not necessary. Sometimes people have issues with Wi-Fi and whatnot. So the machine will also come with a USB-C as well as a USB, a USB-C to a USB or a USB-C to a USB-C. Um, the reason for the two different ones, the key is on this, the port account port is actually the USB-C. So we wanna connect the cable from the USB-C and then either into your computer, if it's USB, this tablet here, which we'll be using today, um, my tablet has a, US, a standard USB. The tablets that Rayco Rents provide will have a USB-C port. So you'll connect USB-C to the back of the unit to the USB-C port on your, on your uh, tablet. So that's the connection for the, for the initial part. If you do use the wireless feature, you will have to connect through the Wi-Fi on your on your computer or the tablet. Um, so it's not a Wi-Fi signal in the traditional sense where you can surf the internet or anything. It's basically just a secure signal. Um, so you would go onto your computer, look for the TSI, whatever the part, it, basically it's a serial number of the port account that you have. It would be a TSI, in this case, 8048. And I don't know what the rest of the digits are. Um, on this one, 8048200205. Um, that is your, your Wi Fi signal. And to connect to that securely, you use the same password, which is TSI dash whatever that serial number on the back of the unit is. And again, I can show you where that is if you have questions. It's right up here. So connecting on the front of the of the port account is, is pretty simple. There's a there's two ports here. There's an inlet or for an ambient and for a, a mask reading. The blue port, blue tubing piece of tubing goes into the blue port, and then the clear tubing right here goes to this silver or clear port. Um, surprisingly, that gets messed up more often than you would think. So that is important to do because that will that will affect whether or not you can get a any kind of daily check or any type of passing test whatsoever. The alcohol wick comes out here. This is a storage cap. Your alcohol wick comes in this. You can see on this, there's a fill line. You don't have to fill this up further than this. You want to fill it to right there. Reason being, because if you fill it too full, you're just going to waste it. Um, and again. It's only pulling from the very bottom here. So anything excess up here is just gonna be a waste. Kind of want to let it drip off. You don't want to put it in completely saturated. And you're gonna put it into the port and it's a quarter turn. 
locked in. When it's horizontal like that, then you know that it's secure. Make sure you cover the, uh, the cap on the alcohol again for uh, um, just so you don't spill it. Then you're going to go ahead and turn the port account on. It takes a few seconds for the diagnostics of the unit to turn on. When that Wi-Fi dongle is, is connected into the machine, you'll see a little Wi-Fi signal up here at the top. I don't know if you can see that. And that's, why you, that's why you put the cap on. And you can see there. So once you see that, you know that the machine is reading and that, that the software will work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my tablet up here so I think you can see it. Hopefully there's not much of a glare. The key to this is, again, is that it's the FitPro Ultra software, not the FitPro client. We wanna use FitPro Ultra. You just double click on there. Did it give the little check mark? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Double, double click. Yeah, now yeah, there it goes. That's no, hot. Maybe can you see it? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So you open up the software. The first thing it's going to ask you to do is to put your initials in. Um, the purpose of this is that's going to document all the information, all the data that's captured in the software. Um, so if I'm doing a fit test, my initials are MB, I'm gonna put those in there. Um, Reiko does send this out with a tablet, but I removed it just because it's a little easier for, for this. I'm just gonna put my initials in um, and that's gonna log me in as the fit tester. Um, you can use your initials, you can use a, an employee number, whatever you wanna to use to designate it. But that, that way you can go back and say, okay, when we did a fit test on May 25th, 2023, we know who, who provided the fit test. Then you're gonna connect the, uh, the unit. Now, right now I have it connected through the wireless. As I mentioned, you can be hardwired. If you're hardwired, you don't have to do any, you know, you, there are no passwords or anything you have to use for that. I've already started this today, but I'm gonna show you. Initially, it's gonna ask you to do a daily check. What the daily check does, it does two things. Um, first, it gives you the, the uh, make sure that you have enough particulate in the ambient. So with the new model, the, the 8048 and 8040, um, there's a minimum of 350 particles per cubic meter. Um, on the older version, it's a thousand. So you do wanna be aware of that. It's a little easier to achieve with, with the newer machine. Um, that's for a standard elastomeric mask. If you're doing N95s, you would use, it needs to be a minimum of 30. Um, we also send the unit, if I pull this over here, that with the 8048s comes with a particle generator, which looks like this. Hopefully you can see it. Um, Typically in healthcare is where we're going to see the need for that, just because that 30 is, you know, you're in, in highly clean areas. 30 is not always that easy. I personally like to run the, port, the uh, particle generator and get the particulate level to about 150 to 200, just because I find that that's much more stable reading, especially when you're dealing with N95 masks. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to, uh, to, uh, achieve that number when you're only at 30. Daily check again, so it gives you enough particulate. The second part of that is it's ensuring that the machine is working correctly. So what it's doing, it's gonna draw through this HEPA filter, make sure that we can get a zero. It's gonna tell us that we have enough ambient, we have a zero particles going through or a minimum of particles going through, and then we know the machine is working properly. Um, important if you have people questioning is the machine working this is your way of going back again and, and verifying that it is so to do the daily check i'm not going to do the n95 version if you're doing n95 masks you want to make sure that you toggle this over and you can see there's four steps there's a classifier step in there if you do a standard one that classifier step is different and once you toggle that over it's telling the machine to actually there's a secondary laser in there 
So it's telling it to count. It's going to count all the particulate that cannot pass through an N95. So for this demonstration, we're just going to do a, a standard one. It's going to tell us to remove this HEPA filter, which it's going to assume we have on there. We remove it. We continue. And again, we have to have a minimum of 350 part particles. I don't know, you think they can see that? We passed. So we're going to reattach the filter, the HEPA filter, and then continue. And quite frankly, this takes longer than the, the fit tests themselves. So once we get through that, we know it's going to pass. The key is that we have, what do we have, 527, does it look like? All right, what is it? Uh, Andean? Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah, 5100. 5100, yeah. perfect. Either one. Didn't need the, yeah, don't need the particle generator or anything for that, which is good. It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, once you get through that, we're going to just do a real quick demo of a fit test. Um, if you ever have questions on this, obviously you can reach out to Rayco. I'm the local TSI rep that works real close with Rayco, so you can reach out to me as well. There's also videos on both the Rayco website and the TSI website um, that walks through all these steps. Um, so there is plenty of plenty of uh, different ways that you can get to get the information you need. I'm gonna stop this because I know it passes. And you can stop it. Typically, you wouldn't, but for for time reasons, we're gonna we're gonna move on. When you're initially setting up the three lines at the top, if you see up in this corner, maybe I can move that a little closer again. This is your administrative features. So doing day to day fit testing, you're probably not gonna need that. Um, you're not going to deal with it. This is when you want to run your reports and different things like that. But one of the things that you do need to do is if you're going to set up your people, ideally you would enter these people in before they came in to fit test. You just click on people and can you do that? And I'll mm -hmm. walk you through it. Yeah. So you click on people. You go ahead and click new. And there's certain information that you need. There's the first name. So an employee first name, last name, and then we need some type of ID. And the key to that is if we have two Joe Smiths, we wanna make sure that we have the, the correct Joe Smith. Now there's other information you can put in there as well as, com as company location, stuff like that. What that really is helpful for is when you wanna go to generate certain reports, and I don't think we're gonna get too much in the reports today, but, um, it just really helps you to filter it down. So if you want to report for, you know, company XYZ and, you know, department ABC, you can you can drill it down to specifically that, and then you can generate a report just for that, as opposed to having to do a report for all the other people you have. The other thing that you might want to consider too is the notes. Um, it's a good habit to put anything in there that you think may affect the the outcome of that fit test. Um, we all know the whole, you know, clean shaven um, situation. Um, that's for each individual company to decide on. But if you're if you're fit testing and somebody is not clean shaven, you might want to put a note in there that they were not clean shaven, or um, maybe they had some dental surgery or something. Again, just a good way to, to track all the information. There's nothing that you once you enter that in. Go ahead and if you could hit save. Yeah, just put one, two, three, or whatever. This is a keyboard. Yeah. That's how you enter your people. The next function that you would use is the respirators. And this is the only part of the software where you can add respirators. So it's the same process as what we did. If we go ahead and click new, we're going to enter it in. It's, you know, the manufacturer the model number, the type, um, X, Y, Z, the model is, you know, 8,000. The type would be either N95, a half face, 
a P100, a full face. Um, you just want to keep that consistent. And then the, the key to this is the pass level. Anything that N95 is always 100. A half face respirator or a P100, those are always 100. The only thing that's higher is a full face mask, which is 500. It's very important that you put that in there because if you have the wrong number in there, if you put 500 for an N95, say, um, it's never gonna pass. It, N95s can only max out at 200 plus. Um, so once these are entered in, it's saved into the software, you don't have to enter it again. Then if you wanna go to a fit test, go ahead and hit the three lines, please. Go to port account, top one. Now, if we're gonna do a fit test, the three dots in the corner here, this is what we control on our daily fit test. So if you wanna go ahead and click on that. One of the features, and I, I just wanna talk real quickly about that is if you're not familiar with it, is this real-time check. Can you go ahead and click mm -hmm. on that? This is really helpful, especially if you're using, go ahead and pick a generic, whatever, five, a 500 one, full face. This is really helpful if you're using, especially with N95s, but any, any respirator, if somebody hasn't worn it before, because um, when you're fit testing someone, you're, you're supposed to be able to show them how to don and off it, make sure that they're comfortable with it and whatnot. So what this does is this allows, if you see if I have this HEPA filter here, I can remove the HEPA filter. The system is gonna give me an ambient, then it's gonna purge the respirator, and then it's gonna give me a real-time reading. And what this does is allows you to have that person wearing the mask make adjustments. As you can see right here, it completely went to the red. So as I make adjustments, let's say as I you know, attach, I'm, I'm tightening a strap on the top or bottom, loosening, sometimes it's loosening a strap. And then N95, maybe you know, the bridge of the nose, working the bridge of the nose. You can see as I made that adjustment, you can watch as the, as the uh, fit factor goes up. So this is not required, but it's kind of like a pre-test. So you can make sure that that person knows how to wear the mask once they've, once they've started. Um, because again, we can't touch the mask. The individual is not supposed to touch the mask. Once the fit test starts, they're supposed to have it on, how they're gonna wear it. They're not supposed to make any more adjustments. So this just is a quick way of being able to, to verify that. Um, typically it takes about 20 or 30 seconds. So it's not a lot of time, but it, it can save the person doing the fit testing a lot of time because you can eliminate a lot of masks that just are not going to pass. So just a feature that you might want to do. Then go ahead and do a, a, a three dots. Yeah, and do do a fit test. Yep. So go ahead and sign. And then you have your roster of people here. You can do a filter so you can filter to the individual that you want. If you don't have somebody in there already, you can add a new person from right here. It's the same system as we saw before. Go ahead and cancel that if you would. Um, but then just go ahead and highlight some, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Things you're needed here is you have to have the protocol that you're using. This one, we have the fast full half. So this would be for a half mask or a full face. If we wanted to change that and we are doing N95s and we want to use the, the uh, modified protocol, we can change it there you can see there's several different protocols you can use. You don't have to use the modified, you can still use the original um, set eight step test at seven minutes and 15 seconds. That's still a vi viable test. Most people have gone into the modified test. So I set that by default to that, then you're gonna pick your mask. I don't care which one it is. And then the key to this, the whole point of the test is the size. Um, make sure that your date and time are accurate because that's going to tell you when the next one is due on some of the reports that we can do. And then go ahead and do a sign. And just for, we're going to do a brief one here. If you want to get that mask ready. So what we'll do is we're going to, you're going to wear it? I'll wear it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll see if I can. Full, full disclosure. It might not fit. <laughs> Uh, and you're not you're you have a full beard. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, so and yeah, we should make them. See, we should make you show your face on that. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and connect to that. And yeah, we're gonna have you. Yeah. 
hopefully you can see, I'm gonna actually move this so you can see your face because it's more important that they see your face now. So go ahead and attach to the, to the adapter. And do you tighten all your straps in or anything? Don't, actually, actually don't, yeah, actually don't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put him on that real-time check that we had talked about. Change the other mask. If you can see the screen. So it's going to it's going to purge. Stop purging. So this is going to let Jordan who's never say, never worn a mask or be, before, or has argued with me that he can pass with a full beard. <laughs> and you might, all right. So you can't see this, but you're at five. So go ahead and make some of the adjustments that you might try to adjust. Mm -hmm. And pull straight back. Mm -hmm. why i wanted you to be able to see this is he's not going to pass with this because he's got a full beard um, but you can see by the score on there he's his fit factor is only five and we need to be at with this one we need to be at 100 so yeah you can try all you want you're not gonna pass all right so in this case we wouldn't we wouldn't continue with that mask one we'd have him recommend that he go shave um, but that's the same point. So let's let's take that off and go ahead and put this another. So what we're going to do is we're going to show what it would a test would actually be. We're just going to put the HEPA filter in there to mimic it. So if you can see now, look at you can see the the, the real time fit factor is is better. And, and what we did is we just connected the HEPA filter to the tubing on the inside. So we know it's a good fit. Oops. And then just give it a second for it to clear, which it's doing right now. So then we're going to go ahead and go into a fit test. Click start. We have our four exercises here. Hopefully we don't have too much glare. Um, the four exercises, which is bending over, talking. Well, talking is should not. That's wrong. Why do we have that one? We shouldn't have talking with this one. That's weird. There we go. Not sure what happened there, but you can see now we have bending over, we have jogging in place, which is the second one, head side to side, head up and down. The only time that you are you're jogging in place with the elastomeric full and half. And technically, if you were doing a P100, um, the N95 is where you do the talking. That's the only one that still uses a talking step. But that's the four exercises. Um, each one takes about 29 seconds. The first one takes a little bit longer, but it's giving us an ambient level. And then it's also giving us what our, our purge and our, am our respirator level would be. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. I don't think we need to go through the whole thing. Right. Okay. That's a, that's yeah. a good test. <laughs> um, so I'm going to stop it. And you can see the little animations too to walk you through it. Um, the cadence is what it sh what you should be. Basically, it comes up. You take two nor two normal breaths for each one, and then you move to the next one. So if you're doing jogging in place, obviously you're breathing normal. But for head side to side, you would turn to the right, take two normal breaths. And again, we're not on a swivel. We don't want to give somebody whiplash. It's 
look to your right, then slowly look to the left, take a couple breaths. And as long as you keep moving your head, we don't want, again, if you watch, we don't want to be too quick because one, if there is a leak, the machine responds really quickly, as you can see with the, with the uh, real-time check. If we don't, otherwise it's gonna, you know, we'd never know where that leak is occurring. And, and that's kind of the information that we wanna capture. Um, but that's it, so. If there's questions, as Matt said, just put them in the, uh, in the uh, notes thing or wherever in the chat, in the chat and uh, we can address them as we need to. All right. All right. We can move to troubleshooting steps. <laughs> Take this off. Yeah. Swap around with me. Do you need the camera? Do you want uh, maybe just to like uh, you know show an adapter so we can but Probably not too much. Yeah, that's yours. <laughs> All right. So yeah, maybe computer not as important now, but uh, yeah, if you want to move that tablet, then I can. All right. So. Yeah, we'll get this here. This, this should be a problem. I don't need to show too much. Okay, so uh, my name is Jordan. I'm here at Rayco Rents. Uh, if you are ever going to rent a port account, it's pretty likely that you'll talk to me, if not one of my coworkers. Um, so we go through a lot of troubleshooting over the phone with people. Uh, we include some troubleshooting documentation as well to help you out. But I'm just going to go over some quick things. So got TSI's troubleshooting guide here. Um, so the first one is just if the port account won't turn on. That's the easy one. Make sure you're plugged in in the back here. Um, if it's not counting any particles, if you're getting a zero on the ambient step of your daily check, uh, most common it is just that the alcohol cartridge has not been put into the port account. So make sure we have that in there. The other thing, of course, is making sure that this has alcohol on it, that it's been soaking in the alcohol cartridge. So we have that here. If this isn't being used, there's no alcohol on here. This can, uh, the alcohol can evaporate pretty quickly too. So that's another reason because this is such a high concentration to keep that storage cap on there. And so if you're getting zeros, re-soak your wick or your cartridge, um, put it back in the port account, should be good to go. If you are still getting zero after that happens, then there's most likely an issue internally, like the laser's not working. Uh, at that point, it would need to be sent for maintenance, but that's pretty rare. So uh, we'll move on. You might want to mention too the alcohol content. Oh yeah, the high, high concentration yeah. alcohol, yeah. So, um, the port account does require a very high concentration of alcohol. You can't just go to a pharmacy and get 90% alcohol, 90% ISO. Uh, that's not going to do the job. So this is, you guys have 99.5, right? As long as it's that or higher. Yeah, 99.5% isopropyl. Um, ours is 99.8. Cool. Should last a little bit longer. Uh, but if you don't have that high concentration alcohol, you're not going to be detecting particles properly here. You're not going to get your fit test done. Um, we move to alcohol again, though. This is a this one comes up pretty often. Um, it's the low alcohol warning. So you might see a low alcohol warning on the port account. Uh, you'll probably see that error in the software. Um, that is going to be caused one by low alcohol or two by too much alcohol and this is where it can get tricky um, so sometimes people will soak their wick pop it right into the port account and i mean you probably can't see this but alcohol is going to be dripping off of this yeah you can see it a little bit so 
if you put this into the port account and there's too much alcohol on that wick, it can actually cause problems internally in here. And what you need to do is kind of let the port account run, dry out and evaporate that alcohol. Because if it's getting caught in the internal tubing or something like that, it's gonna throw off your test. So what we tell customers to do, take this out, give a little bang on the capsule or a bang on the side of the table or something just to get off that excess alcohol, then you can put that cartridge back in. So in regards to that low alcohol warning, there's two things. One, <laughs> make sure you're not putting in too much alcohol. And two, put your storage cap back on. <laughs> um, and if you are getting that low alcohol warning, it could also be because the alcohol that you're using is degraded or diluted. Uh, so if you rent with us, you're gonna get two spare bottles of alcohol. So you can toss out the alcohol that's in this capsule here, replace it with the fresh stuff, and you can re-soak the wick in the alcohol cartridge. What I would suggest too is actually changing this wick out it's very easy to do. All you do is just kind of pop this black piece off the silver, and now I have what's basically a storage cap and my wick. So you can just pull that right out, put a new wick in, soak it for about five minutes uh, with your fresh alcohol, and then that should solve your low alcohol warning. Oops, I must have been ring. Here we go. Okay, so back in it goes. Let's see what else we got here? Oh, yeah, this is a kind of similar to high humidity in a fit testing environment. So, uh, if you do have high humidity, this kind of relates to that buildup of the alcohol. A buildup of moisture inside of the port account can cause problems. So, if you do have high humidity and you start seeing issues with the uh, fit test results, you can dry out that alcohol wick put it in a well-ventilated area for you know maybe up to a day. Um, hopefully you got a spare that isn't saturated with any moisture. Uh, if you do rent with us, you're going to get two spare alcohol wicks, two spare uh, bottles of alcohol as well. So we're giving you some spare items to, to kind of help through these things if you do run into it. Um, let's see, of course we have the failing a minimum particle check, which Marty kind of went over earlier, but if you are failing that minimum particle check, uh, that's the first part of the daily check. First part of a fit test is that ambient particle check. Uh, if you are failing that, most likely you're going to need a particle generator. And the positioning of the particle generator can be important. Um, you know, you kind of want to get an idea of what the room that you're doing the testing in is like, uh, positioning the particle generator properly. Um, usually that goes quite close to the port account, not necessarily right next to it, but um, Marty has suggested too, you can use a small fan uh, because the air from the port account just goes straight up, right? So you could use like a small fan to kind of blow that over and make sure that the tubing from the port account is actually bringing in those particulates. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, yeah, another good one here. Uh, we're failing the zero check. So if you are failing the zero check, uh, that's the last part of your daily check. Um, it's gonna be caused most likely by two things. One, you could just have a bad zero filter. So if the filter is old, it's contaminated, it's not filtering out enough particles, um, you're, you're gonna fail that zero check. So again, if you rent with us, you're gonna get two alcohol or sorry two zero filters so you'll have a spare of those just in case uh, but what does happen sometimes as well is the filters behind these inlets can get contaminated and that's going to cause you to fail the zero so these are actually threaded you can unscrew these let's see if these are cranked on here maybe i can get one off i'll take off my tubing i'll just take one off just to show you guys All right, here we go. Marty, can you give me that yellow screwdriver right behind me? Yeah. So, uh, 
if you're failing that zero check, you're going to want to take off the sample port. That's the silver one. That's where the zero filters hooked up to. And I usually use like a screwdriver. You can use a pen or a paper clip, just anything that's thin enough to get in here. And you can pull out this mesh filter. So it, it is pretty tiny. But if this is contaminated, if this is dirty, that's going to cause you to fail your zero check. And it might not even look, you know, to the naked eye, this might look clean. Um, I myself have had <laughs> port accounts failing the daily check, and I pulled this filter out and thought to myself, oh, this looks fine. But give it a wipe with a Q-tip and some alcohol, usually what I do. Uh, if you have some compressed air, you can do that as well. And then you can put this back into place. Make sure this gets screwed on nice and tight because you can also have a problem um, with your zero check if this, is, if this isn't on tight enough. If it's not on tight enough, you've got ambient air just coming in through here and you're gonna fail that zero check for sure. So make sure that gets back on there nice and tight. And then you can retry and will probably pass. So that's one more thing uh, if you're failing the zero check. Let's see what else do I have. Got failing the daily check. Uh, it's pretty much everything that I go over in here. <laughs> we got a couple questions. If we want to move to some questions. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we can move to questions. Where should the particle generator be placed? Yeah, Marty, do you have, I mean, I typically tell people just at least, feet away. Three, at least three feet. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, you wouldn't want it if you're in a room that has a return vent or something like that. You want to, you know, anything that's going to be, if you, if, you also want to make sure doors are closed. Um, the smaller the room you have, the, the easier it is to maintain a, a steady level of particulate. But yeah, three feet, three feet from the, from the uh, particle generator. Or I mean, particle generator three feet from the uh, port account. Um, and as Jordan mentioned, you can get one of those little battery fans and blow that, that you know, obviously don't want a high, high speed fan because that'll just blow the particulate right past it. Um, but you can guide it towards, you know, toward, towards where you're fit testing. So about three feet, three feet or more. All depends on the size of the room too. Next question is, uh, I thought it would be good for us to show how the adapter is attached to the mask. Yeah. So uh, again, if you're renting with us, uh, we do include mask adapters. So we do need to know specifically which mask you're going to be testing uh, so that we can get you the right adapter. TSI does have a document on their website for that. So you can always reference that to match up your masks with the adapters. But the easiest, most common that I've seen is going to be 3M masks. And these are pretty simple. It's going to come with P100 filters for the mask. And I would recommend, uh, this is just me as a rental guy, but you know, we'll, we'll send you the adapters with the filters, all of the suction cups and clips that you need. I'll show you the setup for that in a second. Um, but I would suggest having a spare set of these filters on hand for whichever mask you are testing, just uh, as a fallback in case something's wrong with the filters we have. Um, you know, we're just, we're not fit testing with them and we don't have all the masks, so we just can't test the filters. Um, so they are going to come with a set of tubing and a tube cutter. And in this case, uh, we have the 3M mask adapter. So that is comprised of these two pieces, as well as this one. This is the main piece here. You can see this is uh, where you connect the tubing, this little probe here. So you want to make sure that these O-rings are all in place. Um, some of them have these big orange O-rings. Some are little the black. Uh, typical O-rings that you'd be used to, but just you want to make sure that those are, you know, sealed, the, they'd seal well, they're not cracked, that sort of thing. Yeah, and Marty, can you? Because I always 
I'm not sure how to answer this question because some people bring it up, but the tubing that goes in here, how important is this tubing that's going into the mask? Is that always completely necessary? Yeah. Yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> um, we recommend it on a full face mask. It's a little bit different mm -hmm. um, because you're, the whole system is one. So if that tubing's not in there, you can still pass. But if you're having trouble passing, you're going to have to use the tubing. Um, I've seen it where a lot of times you don't necessarily have to have the tubing on yeah. a full face. On a half mask, like we're dealing, working with here, um, you're going to want that tubing because it's going to need to get into there mm -hmm. a little bit more. Okay. Um, cool. It can be cumbersome, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I see why there people would ask if they need yeah, it. Yeah, it can be. So um the way that this is going to get hooked up so we have our 3m mask here right we've got two connections that we're going to need to cover and we're going to need to make sure that the filters go on here as well so the first thing is going to be we're going to put on this main mask adapter and you're going to have tubing connected to the inside of that piece and that is going to go through the port on the mask that we're fitting it to yeah, this one, no. So I put it on that side or this side? Doesn't matter, right? Yeah, I think somebody took them off because this is just for fit testing. So, all right. So the tubing is going through that port on the mask. We're going to connect the adapter here. If I can get it. There we go. All right. And now we're locked into place. So this is just a quarter turn connection. Um, you can tell it's locked into place here. Our tubing is here and the adapter kit is going to include these suction cups and clips so the suction cup we can fix to the clip here and then we're just going to connect that to the tubing get that on there and then the reason there's a suction cup in there is just to get this piece stuck somewhere inside of the mask so it's not just sticking out onto somebody's face or something like that and Mine's not sticking right now, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, you know, the main point is getting this adapter piece on and getting the tubing in. So now we have the one piece on, we've got to put our P100 filter on top, which I may or may not be doing at the right angle. But so we have an adapter piece, a filter, and then we're going to put the other filter on this other side here. So this is pretty much the final setup of the mask and the tubing inside of it. And your port account tubing connecting to the piece out here. Yeah, port account tubing connects to that port. So this is a mask that's fully ready to be fit tested, assuming that it's the right size, right fit. Uh, we've got our filters on, we have our tubing hooked up to the port account, and we have our tubing running internally from the adapter through the mask. So that's how you're gonna get these hooked up for fit testing. Like I said, this is one of the simpler adapters and, and brand of masks. Um, there's many out there, some are more complex, but uh, if I would say if you were asking, hey, what sort of mask should I get for my people? 3M is probably a safe bet because it's gonna be easier and uh, it's a pretty well-known brand. So should work out well for you. Did somebody ask when the requirements changed uh, that you didn't need to do the talking exercise that came with the fast fit yeah, protocol? That came in the modified protocol in 2019. Wisconsin adopted right away because they their their uh, standards follow whatever the federal does. Illinois filed six months later. Is the fast so, fit not, test in every state? Not all. California doesn't allow it. Okay. Something that somebody else brought up to me a while back, mm -hmm. and I knew it wasn't all the states, but somebody sure. saw that you modified the exercise, and that was just by picking a different map, right? That was by picking a different uh, protocol. 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 Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that, there's both protocols in the machine. Well, and there, yeah, there's what nine. There's or many ten yeah. different protocols. You just want to make sure if you, if you're using a fast full 
you want to make sure you use the modified fast flow, which is the last one on our drop down list. Um, and, the, and the way you know if it's the right one, as they, they saw, is <laughs> we're wearing a half face and they're talking. The talking is only for the N95s. Someone asked about using a candle uh, yeah. to get particles. No. Uh, we don't recommend using candles anymore. I know it was recommended a long time ago. Um, the um, wax from the candle can, you know, as it uh, is off gassing from the candle, can get in the port account and get the port account optics so messed up. Yeah, it'll clog up the filters, mess with the optics, and then you're in for a hefty repair. So <laughs> don't. I would recommend not doing that. Yeah, it's basically an ultrasonic humidifier. Is what the particle generator mm -hmm. is. If you take a break, say for lunch, uh, should you do a uh, daily check again when you get back? You don't have to. The daily yeah. check is literally 24 hours. Um, if you're gone for a while, and I, I guess it would, uh, I would look at the way, what level I had prior to going to lunch or taking a break. If you know, you're know you doing full face and you have 5,100 particles like we did, and it's in more of an enclosed room and whatnot, you're probably okay. It never hurts to do another one, but it's not required to do another one. You can do you can do a daily check after every fit test if you wanted to. Um, it's really only designed for that first, that first day. Um, typically during the day, a lot of times more particulate is generated as you go throughout the day. So if you're starting fit and testing in the morning and you're good, as people are moving around and whatnot, you're probably going to be okay later. Um, but that's that's completely up to them if they want to do another daily check or not. Uh, let's see. Again, a question about the fast fit protocol. Um, does that stand up to OSHA? OSHA did approve the fast fit protocol, but as Marty just said, check with your state OSHA whether or not it's an acceptable method in your state. The only one I know of for sure is California. Other than that, I think most have, but mm -hmm. yeah, you'll, you'll want to check your individual state. Okay. What should be done when a warning sign comes up with suspicious fit test? That's okay, okay right? Yeah, so what, what that typically is, is if you get like 10 people in a row with that, um, you might start to look into some things. But if it's just one person, it, it's it's okay. It just means that mask fits really, really well. We see that a lot with the uh, the CBRNE type masks for, for military or police and whatnot. Those masks are designed a little bit, not, not once they're different, but they get some really high fit factors. So occasionally we'll see with them. Um, you see one or two, that's not a problem, but if you start getting where, you know, 10 people in a row or something like that, um, you might want to redo a daily check just to see that the machine's working properly. Um, but yeah, if, it, if it's a one-off or just a couple off, then, then you should be fine. Somebody has asked how to probe an N95 mask. Uh, Jordan is running off to go get the mask. So TSI has developed this uh, to get the probe attached to the mask. It's the bedazzler. Oh, Marty's pulling some masks out. Here's a mask that's been probed. Has it been probed? Yeah, that's is that. That's probed inappropriate or incorrectly. Yeah, this this mask would be probed incorrectly. They they put it up near the top. The probe should go right, you know, in the middle of the mask, away from any seams. Um, top typically, I would want to put it on the bottom just because when you're connecting, that tubing's going to pull a little bit. Um, so maybe it's on top. Maybe down right. I would put it. No, I put that one right on. Okay. Just just so it's not on that seam. And then I'll grab it. Get me real quick.
Yeah, somebody asked about changing the protocol from the old way to the new one. It's programmed in the instrument. You can change it before you run the fit test. Uh, while we're getting this ready, I'll keep answering some of the questions. Uh, what is the purpose of the tubing and the suction cup inside the mask? It's to extend the, the tubing of the uh, port account up into the breathing zone uh, of the mask. So, you know, rather than trying to fit test, you know, back here at the end uh, where our adapter is yeah, and it ends inside here, you're actually putting it up into the breathing zone. Uh, will it work after smoking? No. Uh, the recommendation is what? After a cigarette? No. I, I, Question, sorry. Uh, somebody's had a cigarette before they walked in. They need it for about an hour, right? Yeah, I would say probably 30 minutes to whatever, 45 minutes probably. Yeah, that's same as same as with eating. That's that's typically what happens. Yeah, especially with the smoking, that person's going to be giving off particles, uh, you know, from the the cigarette smoking. Uh, so you can't do that right afterwards. So there there's two components to probing a, an N95. There's the rivet, and then there's the, or maybe vice versa, but you can see there's two pieces. There's a little washer, and then there's this probe, which probe, and then there's this tool. I don't know if they can, I guess they can see it, yeah. Be careful with this. It's a really sharp needle type thing, so that just slips onto the, onto there slides down and the washer i don't know if you can see it it's, it's pretty small but it, it's kind of kind of concave double. so that's going to go into here and there's actually a magnet i don't know if you can see that it's it's grabbing it and so then it's going to pull it right to where it needs to be um, can't really see it there but it's, it's on there, there. And this can go back in here and then for this mask it's pretty easy to do. You just slide it in there. Um, and then we want to be about right in the center. We make sure we stand and push down and clicks. We're good. And then we're good to go. I don't know if you can see on the camera here. I'll try to show up, but you can see there's a little bit of the cloth light came up right around there. That's what we want to see because that's going to show that we have a good seal. Um, and that's it. If you have an um, exhalation valve on some of them, you kind of want to do the same thing, but you just do either side of it. Um, some of the other ones, like we mentioned on here, just don't put it on the seam. You want to put it probably on the bottom, close to the center, but right, right in here. Um, some of the cup type style ones, um, you'd want to put them again right in the center. I don't have one of those to show, um, but that's, that's how the uh that's how to probe that okay uh, somebody mentioned daily checks can get dicing in buildings with good ventilation or air exchanges mm -hmm. so we see this a lot in hospitals that have uh, put in hepa filtration any leads l-e-e-d-s certified buildings uh that are you know using hepa filtration and are very, very clean inside um, the recommendation is to try to get into uh you know a small room uh, try to seal off any vents if you can, the, you know, that are pulling air out of the room, um, use of a particle generator. Um, there, there is on the software, in the FitPro Ultra software under help, there is a room setup feature where you can click on that and it'll walk you through. You get the dimensions of the room and whatnot, and that'll help you to, uh, to set up the room in the ideal location uh, how, how long is it okay to run a port account with a alcohol wick when does it run out the machine will tell you it'll okay. be a low alcohol four wick. hours eight hours kind of all depends on the atmosphere too yeah if it's a higher humidity room it's gonna because there's a condenser in here as jordan was talking about so there is point pulling moisture out so if you're in a real humid room it could could uh, take it, it's it's all going to be dependent the the key though is that the software will tell you when when you need to hmm. re-wet the wick 
Are there any firmware updates for the port account? Uh, there, if there are, there has been, when you send it in for annual calibration, the firmware is automatically updated. Um, so I know all RACOs are, all the firmware is updated. So that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you have your own port account, then yeah, just when you send it in, the firmware is automatically updated. Uh, someone still has an 8020 and is asking if they can do a fast fit. Well, no, that's programmed in the instrument. So the 8030s and 8040 series can do it, but not the older 8020s. Uh, the, the pump on that just isn't capable of it. Someone asked, can you use their cartridge for the fit test or only ours? I'm not sure I understand the filters. Yeah, I think they're asking about the filters. Yeah, they can. Yeah, you can use ours. You can use yours. I did uh, suggest you know having your own on hand, just in case ours aren't working. You oh, know, like golly. I said, we don't we don't have all the masks here. We can't. There's not really a way for us to test whether these filters are functioning properly. As long as they're the NIOSH P100, P100 filters, not not chemical filtering filters. You know, you don't want to use those some places will because i think what their questions are asking can they use their own um because they maybe maybe that's what they have on hand maybe right. they don't have p100s you can try it. It, it theoretically it should still work because that any of the carbon in there should not be <laughs> getting out but um ideally you'd want to use p100 but if you have those on hand i have seen it used um okay. we recommend p100s I also want to show this WIC a little bit. Um, sometimes we might ask you to uh, re change out the WIC that's in here. Um, you, it's just a pull apart, no screwing or anything uh, involved. Um, the WIC is inside here, and we pull that out. These are, you know, these last quite a long time. Um, the only time you'd really replace it or throw one out is if it was dirty, looks gross, right? Well, when when that used to happen more often is the question regarding candles. Yeah. Oh. That kind of that's that would clog up. So one of the troubleshooting steps, you know, if if the alcohol is not good in in your capsule, um, you know, what we'd recommend potentially is to take this out, put a new one in replace the alcohol in your cartridge completely with new alcohol re-soak a new wick it takes about five minutes for a new wick maybe Probably two two to five even, minutes yeah. it's, it's pretty so it's not instantaneous though you can't just you know drop it in and and go use it so let it sit if, and one thing on that too unless that that wick is really discolored or whatnot if it's just a matter of that it got saturated with you know moisture um, we don't want to throw those wicks out. You want to keep those and just let them dry out for 24 hours. Um, in that, you know, I mean, you can throw them out if you want. I don't recommend it. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, so I the vacuum grease. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's that? The vacuum grease. I don't have it. In some of the port accounts and the new ones, you'll see there's a little tiny container. It's about this big around and uh, it's vacuum uh, grease. So these things can sometimes get hard to pull out of the port account. You want to put a very teeny tiny bit, just, you know, the drop of a pin, you know, dropped in it and, you know, on this O-ring, these O-rings can get really sticky when they start to dry out. So that'll help you get that, that in and out of the instrument there. Uh, let me see. Does the water quality matter with the particle generator? Not really. Um, we've actually found that you almost don't even need the salt uh, with a lot of the, I, the water. I have run across it. Um, really hard water, maybe. Really, yeah, full of lime, limestone type. That you might want to. We do recommend or recommend um, still distilled. Yeah. Um, but then you're definitely going to have to add the salt tablets. Mm -hmm. I personally have found bottled water. I carry around there that has minerals added for taste works real well um so the quality does for most cases you know tap water is fine but if you're in an area you know where the tap water can potentially be you know, it's hard water hard real hard yeah uh, another couple of questions that have popped up 
no, you cannot stop and restart a fit test where you left off. Once you get started into a fit test, you must complete to the end uh, unless it fails out and then the machine will stop it. Um, can the annual calibration be longer than every 12 months? No, to, you know, it's recommended by the manufacturer, TSI, to have it calibrated every 12 months. Um, so that's that's where that stands. All right, we'll conclude. We're after two o'clock now anyway, so we'll let you all go. Um, Marty and Jordan, thank you for your presentation. If anybody has any questions, you can email me at matt at racorents.com or give us a call 866-RENT-EHS. Um, so and with that, we'll uh, conclude the webinar and uh, thank you all for attending. Thank you. Mm -hmm.